Ja. <lacht> Leute, äh, wir haben uns äh, noch einen ganz wichtigen Mann von Shell gekrallt. Und zwar ist das der Jochen Lach. Der Jochen. So, liebe Leute, wir sind im BMW M4 und ähm, werden jetzt eine Slalomfahrt machen. Das heißt, es uns wird beigebracht, wie man mit so einem Auto vernünftig schnell Slalom fährt, mit so einem Slalom packt. Ja, ja. <lacht> <lacht> ähm, ein, äh, über einen Slalom parkour der Kollege, der Instruktor, sagte, man kann bis zu 60 km/h äh, schnell da entlang fahren. Yes, the safe approach. You can do go faster, of course, if you want. Three, two, one, go. Ja, auf jeden Fall, gucken wir mal, es wird natürlich alles aufgezeichnet, wir haben mehrere Kameras hier im Fahrzeug mit einem Datalogger, das heißt, wir können nachher sehen, wie schnell waren wir, wie viel Gehkräfte hatten wir und ja, waren wir gut oder waren wir nicht gut, ne? Wie? Ja. Uh! Are you excited? I'm excited. Hätte es noch nie gemacht übrigens. Ja, ich bin super, super aufgeregt. Du Wir waren zu agil unterwegs. Sogar drei. Wir haben drei Cones umgefahren. Bio, wir haben drei Cones umgefahren. Kannst du dir das vorstellen? Rekord. Rekord. Wir sind die schlechteste gewesen bisher. Aber auch der schnellste. Direkt zack, direkt noch einen aufstellen. Zu viel, zu viel Gas, zu schnell. <lacht> da kommt der hin. <lacht> So, komm, wir fahren. Wir haben, wir haben die Cones umgefahren. Ja, auf jeden Fall, da sind wir schon Weltmeister drin, äh, im Cones umfahren. Da waren wir vielleicht ein bisschen zu schnell unterwegs. So, hier müssen wir stehen bleiben. Ne? Guck mal, kommt irgendeiner, es kommt keiner. Du musst dich anschneiden. Und äh, jetzt geht's weiter. Also wir haben direkt äh, drei Cones umgebügelt. Ne? Klimaanlage funktioniert auf jeden Fall. Ja, also das ist ähm, wirklich. Boah, ich habe drei Kunden umgeballert, glaube ich gar nicht. Ich hab's gemerkt. Ja, zu viel, ey. Wir müssen langsamer fahren jetzt. Wir waren zu schnell. Wir müssen uns rein langsam rantasten. Ja. Also ich würde sagen. Ja, das ist, mein Style ist halt genauso wie, wie Colin McGray halt. Ne? If, if, okay. if in doubt, flat out. <lacht> also, ähm, da man nannte ihn ja auch nicht umsonst Colin Matt. Äh, Colin Matt. Ja? You can improve your driving by doing a little less steering. Ja? Try to use as little as possible to be as close as, as close to the cones as possible. That will lead, oh, uh, lead uh, to a more stable drive and less work. And on the wall. Three, two, one, go! Up, 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 up! Da kommt gleich was raus. Nein. Ich schwöre dir. Dein Ernst? Ja. Ne. So. Ja. Vio, verabschiede dich mal. Vio muss kotzen. So. <lacht> ja. Also Leute, ihr könnt ihr sehen, ähm, manchmal muss man einfach mal die Eier in der Hose lassen und die nicht sofort so, aufholen. 
äh, und die nicht sofort rausholen. Ähm, und dann äh, erzielt man auch ein besseres Ergebnis. Ich muss aber ganz ehrlich zugeben, ich bin da teilweise auch immer so ein bisschen mit dem Brett. Yes, Ach, wir haben die ganze Zeit falsch umgedreht. Fällt mir auch gerade auf, dass wir die ganze Zeit falsch umgedreht haben. The recording stuff Aber äh, wir drehen dann gar nicht mal vernünftig um davor. Okay. Ach ja, Kinder. Ja, auf jeden Fall haben wir ein schönes Wochenende gehabt bis jetzt. Oder schöne zwei Tage. Da hat... Da hat Shell sich wirklich gut was einfallen lassen. Also auch sehr, sehr divers. Das heißt, WRC Autofahren, also mitfahren. Dann jetzt ein bisschen Slalom im BMW M4. Je nach kommt noch irgendwas. Ähm okay, 3, 2, 1, go! Ich denke, das sah vernünftig aus, oder? Ja, Der sah vernünftig weg. aus. Ich glaube, das war auch das Schnellste. Ja. Mal, also für mich jetzt heute. Ich glaube, so über 60, 65, 70 oder sowas. War nicht schlecht. Macht Spaß auf jeden Fall mit dem BMW. M4 ist vom Handling her sowieso geil. Also, wenn es ums Handling geht, er ist excited. Wenn es ums Handling geht, macht BMW M, also machen BMW M wirklich wenige, wenige was vor in den gleichen Kategorien. Wir reden jetzt nicht Porsche GT3, ne? Aber geil. Ich habe Spaß. Ich gucke, ob ich gleich die Sicherung ziehen kann, die Sitzungskontrolle. <lacht> so, schauen wir mal weiter. Tschüss. So, liebe Leute, also was wir jetzt machen, wir werden jetzt ein ähm, Ausweichmanöver machen. Ähm, okay, wir fangen an mit 80 km. Boah, ich kann nicht mehr also wir fangen an mit 80 km pro Stunde und fahren uns dann hoch bis auf 100. Und das heißt also, wir weichen aus, dann Vollbremsung, dann wieder zurück auf die gleiche Lane. Mit während der Vollbremsung. Guck mal. Jo, geht's dir gut? Auf jetzt rum. Nice to 
Good How are you? Very good. Hi. Simon, nice to meet you. My pleasure. So, is your first time? Um, with you, yes. <laughs> In a hot lap? Uh, no. You guys? No. Uh, yeah. It's my first it's time in a hot lap. Also for me. <laughs> <laughs> good. Here we go. Sounds like fun then. Yeah. Yeah. Someone does it, yeah. Somebody, yeah, so well, somebody chose you to do that. Right? Yeah, Uber. <laughs> Uber. Yeah, that's it. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time to uh, let me interview you for a little bit. My name is Fran Summer. We met before, right? I was yes. in the seat, and um, I looked up your birth year, and I figured that we're both 22. Coincidence, huh? We look amazing. Yeah, exactly. Um, with the slight difference that for the past 15 years you'll be racing BMW, and I was tuning BMW, so. Similar, but uh, what kind a coincidence. Of what a coincidence, exactly. Uh, I have just two, two, three uh, questions to you. I interviewed uh, Danny Sordo yesterday, yeah. and the interesting thing was that he started his racing career on two wheels. Yeah. So did you? Yes. So tell me about it. Well, I start when I was a child. I got, I was six. I got for Christmas a mini bike from my dad. And those uh, pocket bikes? Yeah, yeah. It was was not a pocket bike. It was a little bit bigger, but the yeah. same style, same engine, and. Uh, no, I was driving on our backyard and and, and, and round and and then we I found out one of the magazines that there was actually a race for those bikes. With those bikes, okay. And I mean, then I started pushing my dad because I want to race, and and then my dad finally brought me there. Uh, my mom was not so happy. 
Of course she wasn't. <laughs> uh, and then suddenly I start actually racing because did one race, then it was not so bad, then said let's run another one, and then I end up doing the whole championship, which then I won this very small local championship. Okay. Yeah. And um, and what happened? It happened that along the year, uh, my mom uh, was not happy. She didn't want me to race because she was too dangerous, too wheels. Course, two wheels, and you crash, you hurt yourself. Yeah, and so she kept pushing to give me a different sport. Not really successful, to be honest. And so then, she tried to get you out of racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah? yeah she gave me, she gave me on the uh, on the soccer, judo, swimming, athletics. Okay. And uh, and you said, you know what? Not it, for me. It, it was not my job. You know, I, I didn't like this. So it is. Uh, it was just not part of myself. Okay. And then towards the end of the year, she said, okay, so let's try the go kart, because four wheels might be safer than two wheels. Okay. And it was, pretty, it was pretty funny because she put me on and it was like true love. I did half a day on a, on a, on a mini cart. Okay. I got out and I said, no daddy, I don't want to go on the bike anymore. You can sell the bike to buy me a go-kart. So you preferred it? You preferred driving four wheels instead of what you tried before the Yeah, and, and I think like the kids are very honest, you know. Uh, kids it, never lie. Never lie. Right? So I got out and I think I was, I don't remember actually that day. Uh, and I was so straight to my dad that my dad said, okay, so to buy a go-kart, you have to sell the bike. Are you really sure? And he said, yes. Uh, he didn't sell the bike. Of he course. bought me a go-kart and then everything started. And then again, I did one race, then I did two races, then I ended up winning uh, like the local championship on go-kart. Then we said, let's try Sao Paulo because Sao Paulo, okay. it is the biggest, let's say, is the center of go-karting for Brazil. I won the, the like the São Paulo Championship, and then everything yeah. started. And here, talent. Yeah. So you were talented. You had a gift, and you just uh, you had a gift. You had a you chance, and that, you, yeah. you you tried it out. Yeah. Interesting. Um, when we compare endurance racing, 12 hour, 24 hour race. I know you've been very experienced in endurance racing yeah. uh, with BMW, of course. What would you say is the biggest difference between an uh, endurance race, let's say 24 hours of Nürburgring, compared to a regular normal race? What's what, what's the difference and the things you have to you have to do differently? Well, I think one of the main difference are of course in endurance race you share the car. Okay. So I have two, three, four teammates, which they have different sizes, body size actually, and also different needs from the car. Okay. Even if we all race car drivers, some drives like more understeer, more oversteer, some drive like a softer car, some more like a stiffer car. Everybody has a style, right? Everybody has a style. So the first big biggest difference you have to find some a compromise. Mm -hmm. The car doesn't fit to me, doesn't fit to you, doesn't fit to him. The car actually doesn't fit to anyone. But it is a good compromise to everybody. Okay. And then you have also to put the ego on the side because uh, the ego uh, there is always a competition because we're sportsmen. So I want to show that I'm faster than you and vice versa. Of course. But as soon as you get into that mood, you end up killing your performance because okay. it, that's why you call a team we win together so it has to be the car has to be an all-rounder and the drivers have to be all-rounders too yes and it has to be also the right state of mind we have to be there for the big picture and then on the sprint race then is the opposite then you have to be selfish for your car for your setup for your mechanics so you have really to squeeze yeah you have to squeeze everything at the maximum and and then there is also how you drive the car in a one hour race you can really go for the limit you can use you can curves hard, yeah. you can push hard you can be hard with the gearbox you can be hard with the, with the engine a 24 hours race is the opposite you have to look out for the engine for the gearbox for i mean all your your, your equipment because you need to get through the end so there is difference of course different uh, strategies but i have to say Nürburgring is a good example. It's turning more and more into a sprint race. Okay. It is a sprint 24 hours race. Because back a few years ago, it was about surviving. You would go to Nürburgring, you would want just to get to the end, and by getting to the end... Uh, with, get over with, get it done. And getting, getting done without any major drama, it would mean being at least top five. Nowadays, it is a true sprint race. You really have okay. to push. And then, uh, but I mean, I love Nürburgring for me. That's, that's I think it's uh, the most challenging uh, track in the world. It is just amazing. 
I love it. I love the ring as well. I come 150 kilometers from the Nurburgring, oh, okay. so sure. it's very close yeah. by. Um, one more last question before we need to go. I think you need to go. Yeah. Um, I'm going to drop another question. The last thing I wanted to know is, um, you said that you have uh, you have only one engine for the whole season. Yes. They're all waving already. We need to get done. Um, you have one engine for the whole season. Um, Having an engine failure would be drama during any race. Yes. First race, second, third, yeah. it doesn't matter. So how do you guys or how does your team, BMW, together with Shell, prevent of having any failures? Well, in DTM, for instance, we have one spare engine for six cars. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is not a lot. So uh, how do we work? We work together with Shell trying to push each other to the limit. So uh, we have, BMW has the needs from the oil. Okay. So we exchange with Shell what we need, and the same side, Shell suggests us what can be done different on the engine and what can be done in the, on, the, on the oil. Okay. So this is a constant work and is an endless job because every race there is something new, a different product, something new to be tested. Of course, a lot of this is happening on the background between the engineers, uh, on the dyno and so on. But there is always an update coming, always an update because Every horsepower gain, it is performance. Of course. So uh, that's why sometimes people does not realize how important it is, but it does make a big difference. For sure. All right. Well, I would love to speak to you a lot longer because uh, it's very interesting. It's the job you do is very interesting. The whole, the whole, um, yeah, lifestyle around is very interesting. Um, but we are limited in time, unfortunately. You are limited in time. Um, everybody is uh, busy. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, My thanks pleasure. for the time, and maybe I'll meet you sometime again. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye guys. Bye bye. So, liebe Leute, die letzten zwei Tage hier am Circuit de Fontage im wunderschönen Marseille oder näher dem wunderschönen Marseille gehen zu Ende. Ähm, wir waren, wir sind noch immer noch hier, noch, ja, aber leider müssen wir nachher äh, abfahren. Ähm, für Shelf und was haben wir gemacht die letzten Tage? Wir haben ganz viel gelernt. Wir haben, äh, ja, wir haben ganz viele Bänder bekommen. Und äh, wir haben ganz viel gelernt über Motorenöle, speziell über Shell Helix Ultra Motorenöl. Wo liegen die Vorteile? Wo liegen die Unterschiede? in der Herstellung, Pure Plus Technologie und all sowas. Aber das bin ich, darauf bin ich ja schon eingegangen vorher. Ähm, wir sind BMW M4 gefahren. Wir sind äh, im BMW M3 mitgefahren für Hotlabs äh, mit Augustus äh, Farfus. Den kennt ihr bestimmt, das ist äh, DTM-Fahrer. Wir sind ähm, im äh, Hyundai, äh, Hyundai, <lacht> Hyundai, äh, I20, Hyundai i20N mitgefahren mit ähm, WRC, momentan äh, Punkte, Punkteführer in der, in der, in der WRC, äh, Thierry Neuville. Ähm, wir haben Interviews äh, gemacht mit äh, Danny Sordo zum Beispiel. Also wir haben ganz, ganz viel gemacht und ähm, ich hoffe, es hat euch gefallen. Für mich sind solche Events immer wieder aufs Neue sehr, sehr geil, sehr, sehr ja, aufbrausend und sehr, sehr viel Input kriegt man hier. Und ich freue mich immer, wenn ich die Möglichkeit habe, an solchen Events auch teilzunehmen. Und ihr werdet auf jeden Fall nicht das letzte Mal sowas gesehen haben. Wenn es euch gefallen hat, schreibt es in die Kommentare rein. Äh, schreibt in die Kommentare auch bitte rein, was euch nicht gefallen hat vielleicht an dem Video. Und dann würde ich sagen, wie immer, subscribe, liken, teilen und bis zum nächsten Mal.